There are three main metrics that tell you whether your control link is close to fail-safing or whether it is healthy. And those metrics are link quality, RSSI DBM, and signal-to-noise ratio. And in previous videos, I've talked about the pros and cons of link quality and RSSI DBM, but I haven't talked about signal-to-noise ratio before. And that's kind of backwards because signal-to-noise ratio is actually the metric that is most useful for knowing when you are close to fail-safing and when you need to turn around and come home. And the reason I haven't talked about it before is that at least in Betaflight, it's actually not usually shown. But there is a way to get Betaflight to show you signal-to-noise ratio. And today, I'm gonna show you what that way is, and I'm gonna discuss why signal-to-noise ratio is in some ways the best way of knowing when you're about to fail-safe. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Let's start by recapping what link quality and RSSI DBM are before we get on to signal to noise ratio. RSSI DBM is the raw signal strength of the signal. So we've got a crossfire module here. It outputs one watt of power from the antenna and that signal goes out into the world. And as it goes through space, the wave front of the signal expands. And as it expands, the, the energy density in any given unit of space reduces and basically the signal gets weaker as it travels through space. And this is extremely intuitive. If I'm talking and you get further and further away, eventually you won't be able to hear me. And that's the exact same phenomena that is happening when you transmit an RF signal and it gets weaker as you get further away. That is the RSSI DBM, the raw signal strength of the signal. The link quality is the percentage of good packets that are getting through. So the transmission consists of a number of discrete units of data called packets, and some of them will get through and some of them will be corrupted. And the further and further away you are, the weaker and weaker the signal is, the more corrupted packets there are. A link quality of 100 means 100% of the data gets through. A link quality of 50 means half the packets got through and half were corrupted. And at a certain point, the link quality is so low that the link basically fail safes and is not usable anymore. So that's LQ and RSSI DBM. But SNR is what really connects those things together. To understand the concept of SNR, we have to introduce the idea of environmental noise. And to make an analogy for RF noise, we're gonna use actual noise, actual audible noise. Imagine that you and I are in a quiet room and I'm trying to tell you something and I'm, I'm talking at a low volume. Even though my RSSI DBM is low, you can still hear what I'm saying and understand it perfectly well. Now imagine that we did the same thing, but we were in a crowded dance club or a, a, a loud rock concert or something. At that point, my signal would be swallowed up by the noise. And in order for you to understand me, I would have to increase the signal strength of my transmission in order to compete with the noise in the environment and be understood. And that concept is signal to noise ratio, the relative strength of your signal and the environmental noise. Now, how much environmental noise is really out there? It depends. Well, Wi-Fi is gonna be one of the major uh, noise sources. And you might think to yourself, what do we mean? Wi-Fi is not noise, it's Wi-Fi. Well, any conversation that we're not having is noise. So if I had a 2.4 gig, well, this is Crossfire, it's 900 megahertz. Bear with me. If I had a 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS module to the Wi-Fi communicator, I'm the noise. And to me, the Wi-Fi is the noise. The other guy is always the noise. So in, in the country where there's very little Wi-Fi, very little transmissions, we might have a very low noise level. In a, an urban environment where there's 50 bajillion Wi-Fi routers in a single city block, there might be a very high noise level. And that is the ambient noise level. So the signal to noise ratio that is perceived by the receiver is the relative strength of the background noise and the signal that's coming in that it is trying to discern. And when that signal to noise ratio is high, we will get all, most or all of the data will get through and we will have a very high LQ. And when that signal to noise ratio is low, less data will get through and eventually we will fail safe. So we could see that the reason that RSSI DBM doesn't completely predict when you're gonna fail safe is that you could have an RSSI of, let's say negative 110 DBM. And for an express LRS transmitter with 50 Hertz packet rate, that is more than enough signal strength to actually receive the data. But if we were in the city with a noise level of negative 95 DBM, the signal would be below the noise and it would just be swallowed up and lost. And if you don't know the noise level, 
of your environment, and you usually don't, then knowing the signal strength alone is not enough to tell you when you're about to fail safe. Now, normally this would be the part in the video where I would say, and that's why you need to pay attention to LQ because link quality goes down and that's your sign that your signal to noise ratio is not good enough and you're about to fail safe. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just see the signal to noise ratio like manually, we just know what it is. Now it turns out that modern control links like Crossfire Tracer, ExpressLRS, and Ghost do measure signal to noise ratio and report it in their telemetry. So here's a telemetry screen for a Crossfire receiver. And if I scroll down here is RSNR. That's the signal to noise ratio that the receiver is seeing. But having it in telemetry is one thing. I suppose you could do an audio alert so that if the signal to noise ratio goes below a certain value, you get an alert. But most of us would like to have it in our on-screen display. Here's how we can do that. Here in the Betaflight OSD tab, I've got my standard OSD setup, including RSSI DBM here at the uh, lower mid center of the screen and LQ. Now there isn't any SNR value here that we can actually turn on. Unfortunately, the Betaflight devs haven't added it. I don't know why they haven't added it. It just seems like it would make sense to just have click SNR here. In fact, maybe once they see this video, they'll go, oh yeah, we'll, we could do that, that's easy. And then this video will be somewhat obsolete. That would be fantastic. Instead, what we can do is this. We go into the CLI and if we type get SNR, there's an option here, Crossfire use RX SNR. And if we type set, Crossfire use RX SNR. I'm just going to hit tab to auto complete that equals on and type save. What it'll then do is replace the RSSI DBM value with the signal to noise ratio value. So we can see here instead of negative whatever DBM, we just see 72. And that tells us that 72 dB is our current signal to noise ratio. So at this point, you know what SNR is basically, and you know how to get Betaflight to tell you what the current SNR value is. The next thing we gotta talk about is how do you know what a bad SNR value is and when it's time to turn around and come home? And why is SNR better than LQ or RSSI DBM? Before I tell you that though, if you're learning stuff in this video, if you're having a good time, and if you think YouTube needs to know that more people need to see this video, the thing you gotta do is go down and hit the like button. It would mean a lot. Thank you. The reason that SNR is better than DBM for telling when you're about to fail safe, we kind of explained that when we talked about what those things were. When we look at a given protocol, we could know the absolute minimum RSSI DBM at which that protocol could possibly be received. And in any case where the noise level is less than that number, then that's our threshold for when we're about to fail safe. But in reality, the noise level in the environment is usually gonna be higher than the theoretical threshold of fail safe. And that means that we really don't know when looking at RSSI DBM, when we're about to fail safe. That doesn't mean that RSSI DBM is useless. It still has a lot of good uses. And I talk about those in my video about RSSI DBM, which I will give you a link to at the end of this video and down in the video description. Definitely wanna check that out. So what about LQ then? LQ surely is the ultimate metric of when you're about to fail safe. If you are getting more and more corrupted packets, that means your SNR is dropping and therefore you should expect that you're about to fail safe. So can't you just infer SNR by looking at the LQ. Yes, to a certain degree, but LQ tends to kind of drop off a cliff. LQ is great, and then it's a little worse, and then it's a little worse, and then suddenly it's just gone. And that can surprise you, and you may fail safe when you didn't see it coming. And that's why SNR itself is more useful. So now that you're convinced that you wanna be looking at SNR, what is a bad SNR value that tells you you need to turn around and come home? And it turns out that all of the modern protocols, Ghost, Crossfire, Tracer, and ExpressLRS use kind of the same technology. And that means that they more or less have the same threshold for SNR. And that threshold is an SNR of about four dB is where you should start thinking, hey, maybe I should think about turning around now and an SNR of about zero dB is where you definitely should turn around and come home or you're really at risk of fail -safing. It doesn't mean that you absolutely will fail safe at zero dB, but you are seriously at risk of it, of it going away. As long as you stay above about four dB, you should be pretty solid. And it would be interesting to think about the mapping of LQ versus SNR. Maybe that's something you could do by looking at your DVR after your flights. Like how much of an SNR do you need to have an LQ of 90%? 
95%, 80%. Maybe you come up with a different threshold depending on where you want your LQ to be. But the takeaway is that SNR is going to degrade in a more predictable way than LQ, unless the environmental noise spikes suddenly, and then it'll drop suddenly, but there's not really anything you can do about that, I suppose. The one thing about this that really bugs me is that there's currently no way to get both RSSI DBM and SNR on the screen at the same time, at least not within Betaflight. Worth mentioning that the Brain FPV Radix flight controller has its own built-in crossfire on-screen display widget, and it can display those at the same time. The TBS Unify Evo video transmitter with its own built-in OSD can display them at the same time, but Betaflight can't, and that's what probably what most people are going to be running. So I hope that the Betaflight devs see this video and fix this, because there are times when RSSI DBM is useful. In fact, I put out a video talking all about RSSI DBM. I'll put a card on screen linking to that, as well as a card on screen talking about LK and what a good ARC LQ threshold should be, or maybe there shouldn't even be one. Those cards are on screen now if you want to go check out one of those videos. It's going to do it for this video, though. I'll see you there.